hey welcome back to the lecture so now let's begin here in this uh, lecture we are going to create uh, two files so we have already completed this task and now the driver layer should contain i2c driver.c and driver.h file and uh, we are also going to modify the device specific header file now let's move forward so now let's understand some of the driver api requirements and user configurable items so for the i2c driver we have to give i2c initialization api and we are going to give separate apis for master tx and master rx so because master has to initiate the start condition it has to initiate the address phase etc right and slave is not going to do all those things right so that's why let's give separate apis for master and separate api for slave in order to transmit data as well as receive data so that's why we are going to create master tx master rx slave tx slave rx and after that some interrupt handling apis we have to support about interrupt we'll explore later all right great so apart from this you already know what are the other apis you have to give uh, the peripheral control and uh, the peripheral clock control peripheral enable disable and uh, lots of other peripheral control apis those are actually required and uh, we'll implement all those things in the next uh, lecture let's move forward so now what are the configurable items for the user application so remember that in i2c peripheral the first configurable item would be user has to mention the speed scl speed so that's why we will create the configuration structure with the member element let's say i2c serial clock speed where user can mention the speed and also if the device is acting as slave user has to mention the own address right the device address so for that we will create the member element device address and remember that by default in the i2c peripheral the automatic hacking is actually disabled so that's why let's give one more member element or configurable item for the user to decide whether hacking should be enabled or disabled and after that this actually i have not discussed yet now if the communication speed that is serial clock speed is more than 100 kilohertz then it is considered as fast mode right and in fast mode the clock's duty cycle can be varied and more on that i will discuss later and in order to hold that information we are going to create this member element in the configuration structure so where user can mention what should be the duty cycle when the i2c peripheral is in the fast mode and about the duty cycle of the clock we'll discuss later so all right so these four are configurable items for the user application and by taking these information you have to create the configuration structure right so that is our next job some exercises for you before we start writing the driver so these exercises you have to do right after this video and the first exercise is create stm32 f407xx or whatever your device name i2c driver.c file and driver.h file so these two files you have to create in the drivers folder and after that add i2cx related details to the mcu specific header file so we have mcu specific header file where you have to add the i2c peripheral register definition structure so i2c base address macros i2c peripheral definition macros macros to enable disable uh, i2c peripheral clocks and also bit position definitions of i2c peripheral that is i2c peripheral registers now let me quickly show that to you so i have uh, created those things all right now let's go back to the ide and here you can see that i have created a driver.c here and driver.h here so please create those two files and in the stm32 f407xx.h which is our device specific header file 
so you have to add all the i2c related details now the first detail would be adding the base address and after that adding the peripheral register definition structure so which i have added uh, here and after that you have to add peripheral definition macros which is this one and after that you have to add clock enable and disable macros and after that what you have to do is you have to add bit position definitions of i2c peripheral registers for that what i would suggest you is go to the reference manual and add bit position macros for the i2c control 1 register i2c cr2 register and you need not to worry about oar1 you can leave that need not to create macros for oar2 you can do for sr1 sr2 ccr and also for trise all right trise is not required you can leave so create register bit definition macros for cr1 cr2 sr1 sr2 and ccr so let me show that to you so here i have created for cr1 this is for cr2 and uh, this is for sr1 and this is for sr2 and this is for ccr so complete up to here and i will see you in the next lecture